Yeah, my first job was delivering babies. And um, when a woman is in labor, you know, her, her, her cervix at the bottom of the uterus has to go from this all the way to this. Ouch, very painful. And the more a woman tightens when the contraction comes, okay, the contraction is the opening. It's very painful to stretch. And if you go like this when it comes, you really slow down the labor. If you can relax, you help open. And I use that every day. When painful, scary, difficult things happen, instead of getting tight, opening, relaxing. If you can really love all your fate, let's say you get sick. Well, that's kind of hard to love when you feel so terrible. But if, if you can like wake up and say, this happened to me, it happens to everyone. This is the human experience. I'm so blessed to be a human. Hum the human journey is fascinating and full of beauty and sadness. It's, it's just a very interesting experience. I'm going to love all of it. And something interesting happens when you do that. Instead of the energy going like, no, no, I don't want this, it's not fair, kind of relaxing into it and saying, well, what have you come to teach me? What can I learn? Um, often it helps us heal, it helps us make changes, and, and helps us stop being afraid so much. And the energy we're using in no, if we go into yes, um, Things that were so hard are no longer as difficult. If we want love, the way to get it is to give it. I know that's a cliche, you hear it all the time, but to not always be looking to blame what's lacking in my life on other people or on a bad situation, always to... Um, come back to asking myself, what can I do? This morning, my husband was bothering me and what he was wearing wasn't right. And I had all sorts of opinions and judgments and I was kind of getting a little mean. And then I have to remember, remind myself, see what happens if you start giving love. And I'm, I'm, I know it sounds like a cliche and like all hokey, but it's, it really works. It truly works to like, okay, I'm going to love him now. I'm going to just, not what he wears or what he does, just like I'm going to find his heart from my heart. I'm going to give love. And everything changes. Um, it, he's more interested in hearing. He's not resistant anymore. So love is a practice. Love is something I can do to make the world more friendly for me. My little sister, Maggie, um, had, tr had cancer and uh, needed a bone marrow transplant in order to live. She was going to die very soon if she didn't get it. And only 30% of sisters or brothers are the perfect match for, and sisters are the best possible chance after that, if you don't find someone who's your si sister or brother, you have to go into a big international donor bank, and it's hard to find it. So of all the sisters, I was the one who matched a ge perfect genetic match. Once my, my bone marrow was transplanted into her body, maybe her body would reject my cells and she'd die, or maybe my cells would attack her body and then she'd die. And we decided, actually I decided, because this is my belief system, but not really hers, I, I said to her, what if we went to a therapist several times before I had my bone marrow taken out and tried to clean up our relationship, tried to forgive each other for things we had done, all the times we had attacked each other or rejected each other, maybe we could teach ourselves not to reject or attack, and maybe she would live longer and the, the transplant would work better. So we spent uh, many 
times going through our childhood together and going through our young adulthood and who we were now, just talking about why did you do this, why did you do that, trying to understand each other, and then trying to come into what we called a field of unconditional love. And, and in that field, then our, our cells would come into that field and fall in love once they got into her body. We did that, and it was so beautiful, so meaningful to um, go through that journey. And then my cells were taken out and put into her body, and um, it taught me so much, and her, about what a waste of time it is not to be in truth with the people we love. Why do we hide from each other? Why don't we talk to each other? It wasn't that hard for us to clean things up. It really wasn't. And I, I felt afterwards, I'm not going to wait anymore for a life and death situation to, to get clear with the people in my life who matter the most. Now, some people don't want to do that. My sister would never have wanted to do it if she wasn't going to die. Um, you know, when you're a teenager and you go to a dance and everybody stands around and they, nobody will ask the other person to dance and everybody's just very alone. Sometimes I feel we're all like that. And when one person makes the invitation and says to another, we could be closer. What's, what's going on between us? Could we talk? Could we share a little bit? I have found many, many people really want to do that. They just don't know how. Someone has to make the first move. After the experience with my sister, I just started like, oh, I'll do this with everybody. And some people are so afraid and so wounded and so aggressive. They're not a good idea to do it with. And you can find that out. I still think one should try with everyone. Why not? Life is short. Life is beautiful and so full of opportunity to get close with other people. Every day life is labor. We're working every day and we can work with an open heart and let life flow through us, or we can fight it. And so that's really what being a midwife taught me. Relax into difficult times and they'll go faster. And you know what's on the other side of it? New life, a baby, a, a, new, a new day.